Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are doing a new install in 2014 Silverado and I think you guys are in for a treat. So if you've watched any of my previous videos, one of them was actually an install of Apple CarPlay using all OEM GM equipment. And it works great. It works just like a newer Silverado in that 2014. The only issue that I've uncovered with that is that you don't have the steering wheel controls like in the newer vehicles for the Apple CarPlay. But the company that we actually bought the CarPlay system from, White Automotive and Media Services reached out to us. They liked the video and wanted us to do a Denali cluster install. So that's what we've got in this package, fresh from White Automotive and Media Services. So let's take a look at the box here. This is everything that came in it. So definitely well packaged. You can see it's got some protection, styrofoam, some cardboard in there. And then here is the cluster itself ready to go and you can see let me set that off to the side for a second we'll just see if there's anything else in here you can see i mean it's very well protected i mean you need these uh, styrofoam sleeves in here to keep it from getting damaged in shipping so a plus on that guys but what we've got here is a brand new cluster from white automotive I'll give you guys a more in-depth look, comparison, if you will. But as you know, if you get a Silverado, even in the highest trim package, like a high country over there, you can't get the Denali cluster from the factory, which it just has the four inch screen and then the four gauges at the top. The Denali cluster, it has the big LCD screen in the middle. One thing you may be wondering is, well, hey, if this is a Denali cluster, is it gonna be red? No, not necessarily. This one right here, you can see it's gonna be blue whenever we install it. And if I'm not mistaken, these actually, the, the OEM part that we've got right here actually goes in a Suburban or Tahoe, if I'm not mistaken. The guys over at White Automotive could tell you more than I could. But if you go to their website, they've got everything you need right there. You can buy a brand new cluster specific for your vehicle uh, they've got all sorts of different kinds, whether you got a gas truck, a diesel, you want a red cluster, you want a blue cluster to match, whatever you want, you can get it there. Plus the Apple CarPlay upgrade, you can get it there too. And the great thing is, it's a one-stop shop. You can buy your cluster right from them, which if you do, you know that it's going to be right whenever you get it. So literally all you got to do is go to their website, you pick the cluster for your specific model, you give them your VIN, and it's just a matter of time before you get it in the mail. Now you can, they do offer just a service where you can send a cluster into them. So if you find a good deal on one, maybe a used one or something, you can send it into them. But going this route, I know that those guys have sent me the right cluster right here. And whenever I plug this thing in, it's gonna work for me. And that's another very important thing. If you do, disclosure here, if you do buy a cluster like on eBay or something like that that's used, don't go plug it in into your dash uh, right off the bat you need somebody to program it before you plug it in your dash otherwise you can brick things and it's your vehicle may not start and if you brick something you're gonna have trouble with your vehicle so before you even plug it in make sure you're sending it off to white automotive to get programmed enough chit chat though let's do an install and i can show you guys how this thing looks so with uh, the weather conditions outside today it's a little rainy so what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the little ranger here and we're gonna pull the truck inside the shop. That way I can give you guys a nice clean install of this of this cluster right here. So I'm going to safely set this somewhere out of the way where a little man can't reach it for the time being. You can see he gets into everything here. <laughs> but we're gonna set this off to the side and let's move the Ranger and move the truck inside real quick. Okay, now that we got that out of the shop, we can come over to the truck here hop in you guys will see what i'm talking about pretty quick you can see we got the dash here and another cool thing about this cluster swap is that mileage is going to carry over you don't have to even send that to them so you can see see how you got the analog gauges up there if you guys own one of these trucks you know what i'm talking about so we're literally just going to take this truck let's move it right into the shop and get the job done little guy there really wants to go for a ride we might have to go for a muddy wet ride here in just a little bit all right we just need this thing in far enough to get us out of the elements because another nice thing about this 
is that White Automotive does all the hard work. The actual programming and technical stuff, they take care of. All we need are a few sockets and maybe a pry tool to get this job done. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it, guys. All right, guys, so what I've got here to start off with is just a ratchet and a seven millimeter socket and an extension to make my life a little bit easier. But we're just gonna start in the driver's seat here and you're gonna see there's this top trim panel. All you're gonna do is push up and there should be some retaining clips that hold it in. All right, guys, so I got it loose. It did take quite a bit of force. What I had to do is take the palm of my hands Put them right here and then just push up and it finally did come off but you can see there's just some clips there to hold it in so then you can set that off to the side and what you're going to find are one two and three seven millimeter bolts that you're going to want to take out and honestly that one right there i didn't even need the ratchet for and guys, when you're taking these bolts out, I'd recommend not setting it up on the dash because they'll roll off somewhere. We'll put them down in the cup holder. Let's see if I can get this one without the ratchet. Oh yeah. And number three over here. Okay, all three of those are out. Now, a little trick here is to take this guy here, pull it down so it can clear this panel here. What we're gonna try to do is try to pull this out and towards us. And there's two clips on each side here. You may see it move a little. But that loosens this piece. And then you can just pull it up and out once those two clips clear. Pull it up and out. And be mindful, be careful. If you want to uh, keep your dash in good shape, try to pull this up safely because check this out on the back side. There's metal clips here. And that's a plastic dash. So if you want to retain this or resell it or whatever you may do with it, be mindful of that and try not to scratch it. But we're just gonna set this piece off to the side. Then once again, we have one, two, three, and four seven millimeter bolts. So I'm gonna take those out real quick and I won't bore you guys with it. Mine are so loose I didn't even need a ratchet. I'm just doing it with the socket here. But once all four of those are out, I'll come back. Okay, you can see one, two, three, four, they're all out. So now we can pull this towards us. Once again, be mindful, we're dealing with plastic uh, screen protector here. So whenever you pull it out, do it gently. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna be plugged in on the back side here. Uh, you can see right over there. So let me see the best way I can get a vantage point of that for you guys. Okay, so I've figured out the secret to this clip here. So mine is just held down by this right here. There's a little clip. Push that in, it releases this latch, pull the latch up, unplugged. And guys, just like that, as long as we're careful here, you can see we're out with the old cluster. So I'm gonna take this over to my workbench over here and let's just take a quick comparison before we install the new one. So you can see this is the OEM cluster here. And there's all this stuff. We got the Denali cluster here. Another thing guys I'm noticing right off the bat here is that if, if, uh, if you bought a used one and you're wanting to transfer the plastics, this plastic, this plastic clear covering will not work on this. See, check out the clips. Doesn't look like they're gonna be compatible if that's what you want. Another thing to note is that you may have to rerun your, uh, your harness in the back because look, this one clips in if you're looking at it from the back, the left hand side. And this one goes more on the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and let's take our new cluster to the truck. Boy, that's gonna look so good. I'm excited to show this to you guys. And we're gonna climb in with it. Ugh. I'm gonna set this right here very carefully. And see what I mean? This being on this side, you could probably do it fairly easy. But what you can do is you can actually take this harness and push it over to this side to come out here. So I'm gonna take both hands to do that. Okay, we're routed to the other side. Fair warning here. I don't think this is absolutely necessary to probably reach. This was just, I thought this looked better. You need pretty small fingers to do this. I'm a pretty small guy, so it was easy enough for me. 
but riding this over here wasn't terrible, but just, I don't know, it's absolutely necessary, just something to keep in mind. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the new cluster and we'll be very careful about this, guys. Set it in here. And we're gonna take it on the back side here and plug it in and I'm gonna rotate the clip down to clip it in place. Looks like I'm gonna have to set the phone down in order to do this to make it a bit easier. Okay, so I plugged it in on the back. You can see there it is clipped in. Wires run to the driver's side door, left-hand side if you're looking at it from the driver's side. So now all I'm gonna do is line up my holes here, all four sides, and we're just gonna reverse the installation procedure. So I'll come back after all four, one, two, three, four bolts are in and show you the next step. Okay, all four bolts are in. Now we just need to take this trim piece and feed it down. Once again, guys, warning here, be very careful with the back of this, these clips. You don't want to scratch your new cluster that you just got. So set those down in there gently and may take a little finessing because what it's got right down here are some little, uh, you can see right there, a little tab that's got to slide down there. So do that and then just kind of push it in place and you'll feel these two clips, I just heard it there, pop into place like so. So then you can go ahead and put that back up and then we put one, two, three of the seven millimeter bolts back in. All right, one, two, three bolts are back in. Now we take our top piece here, set it on top, and then this one may take a little persuasion to snap in place. There we go. And honestly, guys, come full circle. Probably, honestly, I'd recommend before putting this panel and this panel back on, uh, I would probably turn the key over and make sure it's going to work for you. But I'm sure the guys at Wide Automotive got us taken care of. I bet we're not going to have an issue with this. So, moment of truth. Let me get the key out of my pocket. And we are going to turn on the vehicle. Let's see what we get here. It's a good sign so far. Let me close the door. Mileage is right. Look at that, guys. It looks pretty sweet. We're seeing it together for the first time here. The really cool thing about this cluster, guys, is if you want the old look like we had, you can get it right here. But also, if we go look in the settings here, you can see the options that we've got. We've got info, audio, phone, navigation, and settings. If we go to settings, this is the real reason that a lot of people want this. And then push on the right hand, whoops, hold on. If we go down, we can look at the display theme. Click on that. And you've got the technology screen. That's the one that everybody likes, the, kind, the one that you think of whenever you see a Denali. So I'm gonna tap that, and then let's get back out to everything here, the info pages. Boom, there it is. Isn't that cool, guys? Look at that. You got your fuel over here. Looks like we need to get some. Your temperature, and then if you put it in tow haul, that's where you get your oil and your transmission temperature. So I know some guys will like that there. Then, I mean, you can just test everything out if you want. See blinkers. See the headlight symbol up there. If we turn on our high beams, you can see those. I mean, so far it looks like it works. Let's go ahead and crank her over. Don't have any bad dash lights or anything. That's good. Let's just scroll through the pages so you guys can get a look at what it looks like. Everything looks right. Let's go see if we can add some more pages. I'm just interested at this point. Got a new toy, I gotta play around. Okay, let's see. So we got technology. I go up. Well, I want to find the info pages. There we go. Tire pressure, fuel economy, fuel use. That's cool. Speed limit. Why not put this stuff on there? Fuel economy. We need about all of them. Okay. There we go. That way we can look through all the pages together, guys. 
So we'll roll it back to info. So there's the main screen. You can see the compass around it. Looks cool. Our info, fuel range, oil life, tire pressure. We can see our average fuel economy here. Our fuel use per trip, speed limit, trailer brake. And that's cool, that's something I didn't have before here. I can actually see, I wonder if that actually works or not. Uh, that's cool. So dismiss that. It works, that is pretty cool, honestly. I didn't know this was something I was gonna have, so that's, that's a nice little feature there. And then we've got, okay, that's one thing to keep in mind too. If you do this, you uh, it will reset your engine hours, at least on the new dash. The old one's still gonna have the engine hours on it. So if that's something you want to keep, um, you will have to take it to a dealership to pull that information. But for me, not a big deal. Then we got our blank page there. Looks pretty good, guys. Let's pull it out of the shop real quick. Looks like it's working so far. Just as we would expect. Another thing we'll have to try here, I'll have to grab my iPad to record, but hook up the uh, CarPlay and test out, see if our audio controls work with, uh, will work with Siri now. Well, as you may notice here, with it being much sunnier and uh, outfit change, it's actually another day after we've done the dash install or the cluster install rather. So um, it's actually been about a week and I've been driving, driving the truck just about every day and it works flawless, it works great. So I wanted to show you guys, I'm recording on my phone right now, I'm gonna switch over to my iPad and show you guys, yeah buddy, got, got my little boy down here. He likes to be in the videos. <laughs> but I'm gonna switch over to my uh, iPad. So let's go ahead and hop over to the iPad, get in the vehicle and I'll show you how the Siri, how Siri works on the steering wheel. Okay guys, so we are in the truck. You can see the dash is on there. We've got, we're in the CarPlay over here, so if I look at my phone, it shows that we are in CarPlay. You can see right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit, uh, let me find it there. I'm gonna hit and hold this, the voice button. If you just hit it, if you press it and let go, it's just gonna go to the voice command uh, that's loaded on the, the GM one that's loaded on here. We want Siri, so I'm gonna press and hold. Text someone for me. Who do you want to send it to? Nobody. No problem. I won't. And you can see just like that. Works great. So it is working. Another feature, too, is that if you go into your phone log here, as long as you have both the Apple CarPlay upgrade and the newer style dash, it will actually, these will function as uh, to pick up phone calls and to hang up phone calls here. So that's another nice function there. So you can truly be hands-free by just talking to Siri and answering your phone calls right here. Um, and then of course too, if you look over here, the dash still interfaces with CarPlay so you can see the actual readout of the radio station that we're on or your music, whatever applications that you may have on CarPlay. Well guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this install video and just short review on the uh, the new cluster that, that White Automotive and Media Services sent out for us to uh, install. I really like it. Like I say, I've only had it a week here, but it's worked absolutely flawless. I love it. It's absolutely awesome. Every day that I'm driving it, I'm finding little functions and features. For instance, like if you have the speedometer page on, it actually shows on the main screen there so you can see what the speed limit is for the road even as you're going down the road. So that's just one cool feature of many, many features. And guys, I'm gonna do some more videos on showing how the CarPlay works. And then I can do like a whole, whole in-depth review of the dash if you guys wanna see all the info pages and how they work and everything like that. So be looking forward to that. So before I do sign off guys, let me know, is this an upgrade that you're gonna do? If it's something that you're interested in, I definitely recommend checking it out. I'm going to leave the link to White Automotive and Media Services down below so you guys can check it out. And I think you'll be surprised. It's not quite as expensive as something like this you'd imagine would be. All right, guys, if you got any questions, leave them down in the comments and uh, we can kind of bounce off of each other. I can answer questions. Other people can answer questions for you. And uh, we'll just use it as an open forum down there. Guys, thanks for checking out the video. And until next time, take care.